In the film industry, no actress stands out as being equal parts successful and publicly hated as Scarlett Johansson. The world's highest paid actress since 2018, Johansson has been under fire for taking roles that they say she should not be allowed to play. Recently, Johansson was offered a role in the film Rub and Tug, in which she would be playing a transgender man. The harsh criticism and hate outpoured for her instantaneously, accusing her of playing a role that she had no right playing. In response to the initial criticism, Johansson stated her acting philosophy that, As an actor, I should be allowed to play any person, or any tree, or any animal, because that is my job, and the requirements of my job. There are a lot of social lines being drawn now, and a lot of political correctness is being reflected in art. However, this statement led to even harsher criticism and ridicule, causing Johansson to drop the role. While, she de while declining the role, she recognized her privilege, but reaffirmed that, in an ideal world, any actor should be able to play anybody. And while one of the biggest results of that were some fantastic memes, we really want to take a look today at her acting philosophy in, of, in an ideal world, any actor should be able to play anybody. I'm Michael Selisky. And while studying this entire philosophy would take way longer than a simple 10 minute presentation, we are going to be looking at who can play whom through the lens of gender and sexuality. The strange thing is, in this context, Scarlett Johansson is right. Today, we are going to be proving that a performer should be able to play any role that they are comfortable with, regardless of gender or sexuality, by look analyzing the performative nature of gender and then examining the pigeonholing of LGBTQ plus performers that occurs if we go the opposite path. And then we are going to be exploring leveling the playing field for trans actors to ensure a potential problem that might arise with this statement. First, we are going to be looking at the performative nature of gender, because in all essence, gender is a performance. We perceive and understand gender through societal expectations, where matching what society expects is rewarded while being different is punished. This happens throughout all of childhood. Boys are expected to act one way, and girls are expected to act a different way. And we, through operant conditioning, train, train essentially each kid into acting in accordance with their gender. This is the crux of why we as an actor can play any role, regardless of gender, or sexuality, because if we can learn one way of performing a gender, we could definitely learn a whole nother way. When it comes to acting, having someone pretend to be something they are not in real life is not groundbreaking news. So why should an actor playing a gender or sexuality does not fit their own be? It shouldn't. It should be much more like the idea of a meritocracy, where the best actors play the best roles and the best roles are not just straight cisgender roles. The LGBTQ plus community should intrinsically understand how performative it all can be. As Vil Wilhelm, a non-binary actor that falls under the trans out umbrella, reminds us, the performance of gender is merely energetic, not something inextricably tied to our body, but rather fulfillment of a societal idea. It is just as easily altered, embellished, or altogether removed as a costume. If that is true for transgender performers, the same can be realistically said for cisgender performers as well. They can learn about the performance of gender and accurately portray any gender role. When you look at sexuality, the same kind of rules apply. Actors need to research any role they are portraying. And gender and sexuality are the same. They require the same kind of research. As Dan Crickler, a famous straight actor who has played gay actors on film, has stated, As with any form of acting, you substitute the things that aren't familiar with those that are. But it's the kind of research you do with any role that doesn't fit you exactly. It seems ridiculous to only play parts within your own experience. That would go against everything everyone's ever learned about acting. Acting is a form of pretend. It's a form of play. We all pretend to be something we're not on stage. Some, most often, though, it is like you are playing a prince who is talking to their dead father and is now seeking revenge against their uncle. However, Ever, why can't we just add gender and sexuality onto that? Limiting actors to roles that they have experience with, thus making sure that LGBTQ plus actors only play LGBTQ plus roles, we will start to unconsciously have a negative effect of pigeonholing these actors into these specific roles, thus limiting their potential to play other roles that are not explicitly LGBTQ plus roles. It sounds like a good idea, on paper. Having LGBTQ plus actors 
only playing LGBTQ plus roles ensures that they will be represented and that those characters will be handled by by actors who know what they're experiencing. However, this might lead to LGBTQ plus actors only being seen for LGBTQ plus roles. And since the current default for a role is straight and cisgender, unless a role is explicitly stated as LGBTQ+, any actor that is LGBTQ+, is going to be presumed that they're not going to fit the role because they don't have the experience of being a straight cisgender person. Typecasting this fashion is detrimental to making sure that LGBTQ plus actors get their voices heard. LGBTQ plus performers already have been finding struggles once they start to come out. Performer Chris New, a gay actor, has expressed his discomfort at how his career has gone since he has come out. In my work, I am increasingly allowed to engage in my culture only when the engagement centers on being gay. Being out has done nothing but restrict my career. In the current cultural climate, I am invited to participate only on the basis of my supposed oppression. Nothing more is required of me. Chris New goes on and states that these limitations imposed by sexuality has led to him actively declining roles that are described as gay. However, this makes him not work at all. This is one of the adverse effects of only casting LGBTQ plus as LGBTQ plus. They are automatically discounted from any other role since the default is straight and cis. It creates for this whole community of actors and performers this sense of other on them and allows society to slowly alienate them and keep them from performing roles that they might not be 100% matching. Well, if we break down this other and allow LGBTQ plus actors and cisgender actors, straight actors to play any role This breaks down harmful alienation and allows a much more fluid look at casting outside the rigid structure that can actually limit the LGBTQ+. However, I know what we're all thinking and worried about. That having any actor play any role, regardless of gender or sexuality, will cause LGBTQ plus actors to be shunted for straight cisgender actors that are more common and more popular. However, there is a very simple solution, and it's casting more LGBTQ plus actors in all roles and consulting them on roles that involve the LGBTQ plus community. By doing this, we can show that this ideology of having any actor play anyone is based on inclusion, not exclusion. It all starts with working with producers and casting directors on breaking down what we think is the basicness essentials of a character. As Viviana Vargas, who runs the company Advancing Arts Forward, says, only pin down what is integral for the storytelling by the playwright. If a play does not have an element of race, gender, gender identity, age, disability, etc., specific for the storytelling, bring everybody in. Be open to seeing underrepresented communities play a character that was not necessarily written for them, or a role that was not previously cast with an actor from their community. LGBTQ plus performers should be being considered for every single role because unless the character has been explicitly stated to be straight and cisgender, there's no reason that LGBTQ plus performers cannot perform these characters or that they can be interpreted in a new fashion. And we need to allow LGBTQ plus actors in all roles, not just lead roles, on both Broadway and in TV and film. The biggest examples of this is in the TV show Transparent, a comedy series that tells the story of a family and their lives following the discovery that one of their parents is a trans woman named Mara. The titular trans woman in this show is played by Jeffrey Tambor, a cisgender male. However, after casting the cisgender title character, the company, specifically the creator Jill Salloway, was adamant about hiring hiring trans performers for the other roles in the show making sure that the trans community was very much included in this production about the trans identity and journey. This is a huge example of how we can include LGBTQ plus actors and cisgender actors in telling stories that relate to the LGBTQ plus community and also break down that barrier of forcing people to play roles that they have experience with in real life. 
film and theater continues to grow, as does our knowledge and experience, we must take steps to ensure that we continue to be a diverse and inclusive community, starting with eliminating the barriers of gender and sexuality when it comes to casting. By opening up casting to all, regardless of gender and sexuality, we acknowledge the idea that gender is in itself a performance. This means that through proper research and work, any actor can perform as any gender. And the same holds true for sexuality. To avoid the inevitability of straight cis people playing all the roles, steps need to be taken to ensure that LGBTQ plus actors are being included in all levels and all roles, not just ones that are for LGBTQ plus characters. Theater and film should reflect the diversity that already exists in the world today, and the actors portraying the characters in this world should be just as diverse and inclusive. By eliminating gender and sexuality as qualifiers for roles, we are opening ourselves up to a more inclusive future where actors are comfortable expressing themselves both offstage and on stage. Thank you so much for your time.